Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! Today we'll be making doll clothes, and it's been a long time coming. When it comes to customizing dolls, there can be much more to it than just painting the face. Creating a unique outfit can enhance the quality of the doll, describe their character, and just plain look cool. So how does one go about making doll clothes? Well, it's not so different from sewing human-sized clothes. I'd like to be clear right away that we're going into this assuming you already have at least a little basic knowledge of sewing, patterns, and how to use your sewing machine. Even if you don't, I'm hoping this video will nonetheless make a good introduction to the subject. Let's start with a list of general tips about doll clothes that are worth considering. There are problems that arise from doll-sized clothing which differ from human-sized clothing, most of which is thanks to the smaller scale. For example, while cotton fabric may drape nicely on your favorite sundress, the same fabric cut down to doll size would lay stiff and rigid, behaving nothing like it does on human size scale. This is an important aspect about fabric to consider when purchasing fabric for doll clothes, especially if you're aiming to make a flowing gown or a ruffled skirt. For something like that, you'd want really drapey chiffon or maybe knit. Other things to consider are the thickness of the fabric, which will build up much more noticeably on the doll, or how easily you'll be able to sew that tiny seam allowance or how much the edge of the fabric frays. The proportions of the doll also force us to sew differently than we would with human clothes. With heads too big to pull a shirt over, doll clothes generally have to velcro together in the back. Alrighty, let's get to it. Here's my secret, and personally, I think the absolute best way to make doll clothes. We are going to deconstruct a factory-made outfit. If you purchased your doll or even bought one used, it's likely to have at least some article of clothing on it, preferably a shirt, maybe pants. Did you know that with every article of factory-made clothing comes a potential pattern instead of instructions just waiting to be interpreted? That's exactly what we're going to do. Even if it's not the exact design or shape you want, it's a good place to start. Why make it from scratch when somebody else has already figured out what curves and size fit perfectly? If you've got a variety to choose from, like I do, pick something that's close to what you want to make. I save all the clothes for my purchases and finds in this giant box just for that purpose. Try to look past the fabric's colors and patterns and just search for the structure you'd like to copy. For this tutorial, I'll be using this cute sleeved sundress from, I think that's Art Class Draculaura or something. Turn the dress inside out, grab your seam ripper, and gently pick apart the stitching one row at a time. Don't do it all at once in a frenzy, take your time on this. We want to deform the dress as little as possible. If you look closely, you'll be able to find clues on how the article was sewn together. For example, the skirt seams overlap the bodice seams, meaning it must have been sewn on last. It's good to take note of stuff like that. Take physical notes of how the seamstress originally put it together, or even photograph each step. Because these doll clothes were mass produced, the steps taken to assemble them are often streamlined, efficient, and easy to follow. When reversed, these will become your instructions on how to sew the outfit together. Something important that you don't want to ignore is the seam allowance. This is the buffer zone along the edge of the fabric and the stitching. Doll clothes generally have a teeny tiny half centimeter or 1 8 inch seam allowance. When making your pattern, feel free to extend that zone a bit to make sewing under the machine more comfortable. Now that everything's in pieces, we want to iron them flat. Make sure you've noted that seam allowance before you iron it away. Pin the flattened pieces to tissue paper and trace them. Cut out the pattern pieces. If you've got a piece that should be symmetrical, hold it up to a light to make sure you traced it right. Write some helpful instructions on the tissue pattern itself to make the job easier in the future. For example, I'm marking this pattern piece as center front, this one is side back, this is the sleeve, and so on. Basically, I'm mimicking how a real pattern looks. I keep the original fabric until the end too, just in case I need to refer back to it. Time to write up those haphazard notes into a cohesive, clean set of instructions for yourself to follow. I number the steps, and those numbers correlate with the numbers I draw on the pattern pieces themselves. For example, step one is the shoulder seam, so I put a little one for that. Two is the neckline, hem the sleeve at three, attach the sleeve to the bodice at four, and so on. It makes it so easy to follow, and you're really going to thank yourself later. Now, I know you're tempted to start cutting the fabric, but hold your horses. Hold up the pattern pieces to your doll and make any corrections you can find. Although we copied it from another Monster High doll, there's still a chance it deformed or stretched away from its true shape. 
It's much easier to fix mistakes at this stage rather than after you cut your fabric. Finally, time to work with the actual fabric. If you're new, I suggest using cotton. And if you've got a cat, she'll help you pick out the best fabrics. Treating it like you would a real pattern, fold the fabric in half and pin the pieces down to cut them out. From there, you just follow the nice clean instructions that you've given yourself. Sometimes, for hemming the neckline, I will use Fabri-Tac glue instead of sewing, just because it's so darn small and I can't easily pin it in place. Here's how you attach sleeves. It looks a little tricky at first, I remember thinking it was weird the first time I did it, but just make sure the right sides are facing. In this example, I'm sewing with cotton fabric. If the sewing is getting tricky, slow down and take advantage of the hand crank. I often jiggle the hand crank back and forth to ease the needle into tough spots and avoid poking my project down into the depths of the machine. <laughs> Some things that I always keep in my mind while I'm sewing are things like, how's the seam allowance? Are the right sides of the fabric facing each other? Should I maybe hand stitch this part? Or should I glue this part? Stuff like that. When you turn something this small with curves, it's pretty much necessary that you clip the curve to get it to lay flat. This is usually a problem under the arms. It seems fabric never wants to turn and lay nicely on this scale, so I iron as well as top stitch these kinds of areas. To gather the skirt, step up your machine's stitch width and sew down the piece close to the edge. Take one of the two threads and pull. Voila! I should have mentioned this earlier, but it's very useful to keep a mannequin doll around for both clothes and wig purposes. Save your customized doll the trouble. I tried the outfit on the mannequin doll several times through the process just to make sure everything's fitting correctly. I also try it on near the end to make sure I place the velcro or the snaps in the correct location. Make sure to sew on the velcro while the outfit can still lay flat. You can use the machine for the velcro too, but I generally hand stitch it. Before you sew the back seam, pin it in place and slide the doll in to make sure it can get past her booty. Readjust if necessary and sew the final seam. If your doll's got a tail, try on the outfit and snip a little hole where the tail will enter. Fold the pieces back on the inside where they won't show and glue them down. For final touches, you can attach buttons, sew embroidery, add pretty details, anything you want. And if you don't have the perfect fabric or pendants to match your vision, you can always paint on the fabric itself with acrylics, something Hexion does all the time, and make custom decorations out of Sculpey clay. With the final pressing, the new outfit is done! It can be time consuming, especially if this is your first time sewing a pattern, so you should be proud of yourself for making it all the way through. Congrats! Now, I basically stuck to the factory pattern for the sake of this tutorial, but the beauty of copying a base pattern is that you can tweak it to your liking. I made a total of three dresses using this same pattern. First is the red example dress on Neo here, which ended up unintentionally Christmassy. 
For the cotton dress that Ruhara is wearing, I added a front panel piece, shortened the sleeves and skirt, and left off the lace trim. For my new white dress, I made the sleeves full length, added a gathered ruffle at the neckline, and used two layers of fabric to make the skirt. See how, just based off of one pattern, you can get very different results? And once you've gone through the pain of making one reliable pattern, you can always refer back to it and alter it into new patterns. Label and keep your patterns in envelopes or Ziploc bags to stay organized. If you use this method, before long you'll have a great library of patterns to work from, and you'll find yourself no longer needing to dissect factory-made clothes. But what do you do if you need to make a pattern from scratch? Well, I'll tell you, but this video is getting kind of long as it is. Check back for part two, and I'll see you there! Stay artsy! Annyeong!